Hi, I'm Michael Yosley, and today we're going to be doing a 2D simulation of a shock in a CD nozzle using Fluent. This is going to be listed as part two, so down in the description I'll put where the time where you can skip to if you've already followed the part one video. As you can see, we've got Fluent pulled up right here. Uh, we're going to start this one from scratch, so we'll pull over the Fluid Flow Fluent, drop that into our workspace. Click on Geometry. Over here, make sure you go to Analysis Type. Put that as 2D. I prefer to use the Design Modeler Geometry, so we're going to use that one. It's going to take a few seconds to load here. Okay, now that we've got Design Modeler pulled up, click that just to make it easier. And we're going to use the 3D Curve because I've already got the coordinates saved from coordinates file Project one I've got CV1 bottom we'll open that so you can barely see it populate in the middle so we're going to click generate make sure your units are set to meters as well that should be the default click this so that we can see it a little better and the way you're going to want to save these I just use notepad, it just has to be a text file. These should all be ones, these are your points, one, two, three. This is your X coordinates, these are your Y coordinates, these are your Z coordinates. Since we're doing in 2D, these will all be zeros. And for the, this is the top. So for the bottom, you're just gonna put a negative in front of all these numbers so that you can get the downward slope part, the bottom of the CD nozzle. Okay, so now we'll, Back to Concepts, 3D Curve. We'll import the second, the top part of this curve. Coordinate Files. On. Top portion. Generate. Now to make this a little easier, we're going to zoom out. Now we just have to connect these curves. And click and drag to find the second part. Generate. Line from points. Same thing, click and drag. Uh, it looks like I didn't select that top one there. Click and drag. Generate. There's the outline of your shape. Now we do surface from edges. Then you'll drag over each one of these, make sure all of them turn green. Apply. We'll generate that surface. Now you go down here, surface body, you'll make sure you change this to fluid. Because that's going to be the inside of our nozzle where the air is going to be flowing, so we want to make sure that that's labeled correctly. Alright, that should be everything we need to do in the geometry portion. Minimize that. Then double click on mesh. All right, now that we've got the mesh pulled up, I'm going to go into Geometry. And it's going to come up with this line body that's going to have a question mark next to it every time. So we'll need to go in here and suppress that so that it doesn't affect the rest of our analysis here. So going to here, what I like to do is put this at 0.01. Go to sizing, change that to adaptive, and generate. Take a few seconds for that to populate. You can see the bottom left hand corner is working on it. Okay, and there's our mesh. And before we leave this section, 
we need to add our named okay and to create our name sections we're going to go up here click on this select edges left click on that then right click on it create name selection we're going to call this inlet make sure that that's selected correctly okay then we're going to go over here and do the same thing to create our outlet but you need to make sure that you're selecting edge otherwise it's just going to call the whole thing your inlet and outlet and that's going to give you some issues once we go to the next portion click generate one more time take a look at that mesh all right and then back to our workbench update that then we'll be ready to head into our setup section all right once we have the green check double click setup Now this one usually takes a little bit longer to load. All right, this is going to populate. We want to select double precision. Make sure that that's in 2D. Display mesh after reading. Start. All right, now that we've got our setup portion pulled up, first thing we want to do is go to models. We need to turn energy on. Click OK. For this simulation, we're not concerned about the boundary layer, so we need to change this to an inviscid flow. Okay, then we'll go into physics operating conditions. We're going to set this to zero. Now everything in models is taken care of. We're going to go to materials, fluid, make sure air is selected here. It should be the default. going to pull up this and since we're doing a high speed flow that is going to hit Mach 1 we're going to need to change this to an ideal gas so the density will not remain constant throughout change and create close that window all right everything in materials is taken care of go to boundary conditions inlet We're going to change this to a pressure inlet. And then it should pull up the different settings for the pressure inlet. Here are our properties for the pressure inlet that we're going to have to change. For our total gauge pressure, this is where we're going to put our stagnation pressure. And this is where we're going to put the pressure at the inlet. And we've done the calculations, so we're going to pull that up. Stagnation pressure. Here's our pressure at the inlet. 99, 318.77 pascals. And there's our temperature. We're going to need that in a second, too. So, Click apply on there. All right, and then we're going to go to our outlet, which is also a pressure outlet.
All right, if you're watching from part one, this will be the time that you'll jump in. So we're, we still have the pressure outlet selected. Clicking that and pulling up the window to change the properties in that. So for part one, we had this set to 3,728.76 pascals. And for this one, we just need to put that number higher. So we're going to use 90,000 pascals. Leave everything else the same. Close that window. Now everything in our setup is complete. Double click initialization. If we click standard initialization, it should pull up. Compute from inlet. That's our gauge pressure we entered. It's slightly off from our temperature that we entered, but it's very close. Our velocity, that is what we calculated before. So everything there is lining up. Initialize double click run calculations number of iterations as I said before you can put this number higher to see if you're getting precise results 500 seems to get a very accurate result without overloading the computer and taking longer than we need to so I click calculate it's still going to take a little bit to run those residuals down All right, calculation complete. Take a look, as you can see, the residuals were getting very small. If we ran it to a thousand iterations, they'd probably be even smaller, but for our purposes, this would be good. Results, double-clicking contours. Name this one pressure. Select interior surface body. Make sure that is selected filled. Save and display. Look at the static pressure. As you can see right here is where the shock wave occurs. And we see that again by doing our plot. XY plot. Double clicking on that. And to do these, you're going to want to create a new surface. Uh, we're going to call it center line. So line. And we know that our nozzle goes from negative 0.5 meters to 0.5 meters. We'll create that. It always does that for some reason. So you just have to enter it again, center line. Create, close. And now you can select the center line, find out all these different properties for that. We're going to do velocity with this one. And I go into curves. I like that to be a center. It has a lot of points on there, so you don't really need the line connecting them to, to tell what's going on. But I think it looks cleaner that way. See, this is where your shock wave is occurring, just like we saw in the contours. We can change that. Look at the pressure on there, too. See, the pressure goes back to increasing right after the velocity decrease. So we're going to pull up the workbench again. Now you've got the setup, you can go to results. This will take a minute to load as well. All right, now we've got our results window pulled up. Center that. You can also do, I like the contours in here better. They look a little cleaner.
we can do velocity. See those are a little neater looking contours. Minimize that. It's our velocity contour. And there's one other thing that I was having issues finding when I was trying to do the different plots. You can also use velocity and in the second drop down window rather than just using the velocity magnitude you can view the Mach number still along the center line save and plot. So the Mach number increases and decreases. And then the other one that I was having issues finding was properties if you're looking for the speed of sound you can plot that it's down goes back up right where our shock wave occurs all right and that's pretty much it for the shock and a cd nozzle uh, thank you very much